Chlumsky versus the Klee Pie. So I came up with a list of questions that I wanted to um, see if I could get answered. And so I'm just gonna quickly go through them and um, share their response to you guys. So I asked them specifically, I need to put my glasses on because I can see far away, I can't see up close. I asked them, do Pomsky breeders still breed the full Husky to a full Pomeranian? So she said that they are still breeding um, full Pomskys and Siberian Huskies together with some of the breeders, but a lot of them have already moved on to second, third generation of Pomskys. And so I was just curious, I just was wondering. And by the way, if you aren't sure how they do this, um, they actually use a female Husky and a male Pomeranian and they uh, do artificial insemination because of course the Pomsky is like this big and the Siberian Husky is this big. There's no possible way that a Pomsky could get a Husky. When the Alaskan Klikai were being produced, um, Linda Sperlin, you know, she added a mix of this and a mix of that to try to come up with what she envisioned for the breed as far as the looks, the temperament, you know, the coloring, all of these things, the size. Um, and so I was under the assumption, but I know assuming is not necessarily the right thing to do, but I was under the assumption that they had to probably bring something else in. Um, and so she did tell me that, um, yes, they do, um, or at least they are now doing that. And the reason why is they are trying to get um, recognized with AKC. And uh, I know firsthand how very difficult it is to get into AKC because I've been involved with the Alaskan Sea Kai since 2003. And in those 18, 19 years, we have applied to AKC four times that I know of. And um, no, the previous three times, um, we were always denied. Now I have some amazing news. I think it's amazing. Not everybody's going to agree, but I was just informed a couple of days ago that the Alaskan Klikai has been accepted into the FSS. Now the FSS is the beginning stages of um, full recognition in American Kennel Club. And so right now, the Alaskan Klikai is recognized with United Kennel Club and with ARBA, which is American Rare Breed Association, and then some international clubs, but big time full clubs. Do we all want to eat my shoes? Yes. Um, we have not been um, successful with AKC prior to now. We still have a little ways to go, but I thought that was super exciting um, news for the Alaskan Clay High breed as a whole. Not everybody is going to agree with me on that, um, but I think it's amazing. I think it's great. Um, Linda Sperlin is the, the main person who created the breed standards for the AKC who is just um, pushing through to get us recognized. So again, I'm super excited. Back onto the Pomskys, they are trying to do that. They also know that it is going to take them years and years and generations and generations of um, full record keeping, of DNA, of health, everything. And so with that, AKC requires at least pretty girl at least three ah. breeds um, in the mix so the Pomsky people are adding um, Alaskan Eskimo I'm sorry American Eskimo and funny enough the Klikai have Eskimo in them um, but they're adding that and they did have a big meetup in I think 2019 and they had some AKC judges go over the Pomskys in order to see what they the judges thought they should add to, you know, make some changes based on what their breed standards um, should look like, what they wanted it to look like, and that type of thing. So one of the breeds is the Eskimo, and then they are also considering another breed. And uh, where did I see that? It's called a German Klein. That one is still on the fence. They're not sure if they're going to continue with that or not, but for sure the Eskimo is. And so again, it's gonna take them years, um, but they're moving in the right direction to do that. The next question I asked them, if they had a breed standards. As a new breed, you wanna see that they have a breed standards because you wanna see that they're breeding for a specific goal. If you don't know what that is, basically a breed standard is a detailed description from head to toe of what the breed should look like their head shape, how they should move, 
their coat, their size, their temperament, their tail carriage, everything about that breed is listed in here so that let's just say you're in a dog show and a judge is looking at that dog, they need to know does it fit the breed standards because what's the whole point of a dog show? It's to make sure that what you have in front of you fits this as close as possible and that that is the best representation for the breed in that show. That's why I wanted to know if they had one and they do in fact have one. The link is in the description of this video if you wanted to visit them, but that's where I got the, um, the information from. And then I asked about the size because uh, what I was reading and what videos I watched, um, they were all over the board. And so I wasn't sure, did they have a standard? Are they looking for a specific size? So of course, the Alaskan Clique High, we have three sizes um, and our sizes, it's toy miniature standard and it goes off of the height from the ground to the top of the shoulder blades. And so I wanted to know what the Pomskis were um, supposed to be ranged at. So they have three variations um, and they are toy, which we have a toy, which is under 10 inches. So the Alaskan Clique High's toy is 13 inches and under. So three inch difference on our toy size. And so their miniatures are up to 14 inches. At least 10, but up to 14 inches. So they have four inches there for their miniatures. The Alaskan Clique High minis are over 13 inches, up to 15 inches. So we have two inches there. So big difference on that. And then their standards are 14 uh, to 18 inches tall. Our standard is over 15 inches up to, it's really 17, 17 and a half is considered oversized, but still within our standard. So um, from everything I've read, the palm ski is thicker boned, um, obviously bigger everything because um, that's, I don't know. I don't know genetics, but that's what they're getting. <laughs> so I asked her what the average weights and the average heights were, and this is her response. They can range from six pounds to 45 pounds. Please see the breed standards for those categories, right? Which is on um, the link there, and you guys can always look at that. Remember that this is just based on the people that they survey and that they're responding and they're able to get that information from. That's the hardest part about keeping track of things. Just like for my own breeding program, if my puppy owners don't tell me what the adult height and weight is, it's really hard for me to know what I'm producing and if my estimates were accurate. Like that's pretty difficult. All right, so my next question was color, coat color, because obviously, the Alaskan Clique High, we have very strict requirements for coat color. Pomsky, uh, as Pomskis are a mix of both Siberian Husky and Pomeranian breeds, all color combinations are acceptable at this time. As the goal of Pomskis is to create a miniature version of the Siberian Husky, Husky masks are highly desirable. However, markings should not be the most important judgment when choosing your breed stock. Body structure, health, and temperament are first priority. So they sent us some pictures um, of some Pomskis, and so I wanna show you. I did ask them, can you send me a few pictures, or I just asked if they wanted to send me some pictures so that you guys can see um, from some of their breeders and what we see. So if you see that, those two pictures, you see one that looks very, uh, Samoyed look, I guess. I don't even know what that, no, it's not even, it's that, it looks quiche hound, not Samoyed. Um, so the white one actually looks esky, more esky to me because of the longer fur. So our American Eskimo is gonna have that longer fluffy coat that just kind of drapes. Um, but a quiche hound looks very similar to um, the one that has the blacks and tans, um, cream colored, and um, quiche hounds also have longer coats. So I thought those were interesting. And then the others, um, so that one looks, um, I don't even, I don't know all my dog breeds, so I'm not sure what they would call that, um, but very different from any Husky or Clique High. And so here she says colors also include blue, lavender, chocolate, red, gray wolf, a Gaudi, 
cream sable, etc. So any color, all colors. Um, yeah, that's the colors. Ours. Oh, thank you. And so look at the the one from Platinum Palm Skis looks the most like a clique height out of all of those pictures, right? I would say. I'm sure you guys would all agree. But that looks the most like a clique height. None of the others look like a clique height. Um, so very, very different. All right, so my next question, their typical temperament. Um, so I asked if she could describe their typical temperament, and um, she said they're active, friendly, very uh, family-oriented, they're loyal, they're playful, their quirky antics of their husky counterparts is what makes them the primary cho choice for many owners. And so when I read that, um, and what I saw online with pictures and videos, um, a lot of that reminds me of the clique high. Um, I feel like just so much was the same. And so I was like, man, sometimes I think, huh, I wonder if we have something else in our breed. Because remember, we have Alaskan Husky. And Alaskan Husky is a mix of anything and everything. And we just don't know from generations back really what was in those um, Alaskan Huskies. But a lot of stuff seems pretty similar. And then I asked if they can describe um, the challenges that owners face with this breed. You know, every breed we have challenges. Um, every, and we can't ever satisfy every owner, you know. Some people just make um, quick decisions and they don't think about things and maybe they made the wrong decision. Not every breed is for everybody. Um, but I did ask what is, you know, some challenges. And she said, excessive chewing and digging. But we find that this occurs when the palm ski is not receiving enough activity or stimulation. Guys, isn't that like exactly what I talk about? Like this breed is so similar. This breed, they get bored easily. They will have issues because they are not tired. They are not exercised. They are not stimulated. And so no matter what the breed is, it's the same thing. It's the same concept. And then she went on to say, um, owners will compare this dog to their beloved lab or other breed. They are smart and active and thus can uh, get themselves into trouble if owners are not educated well enough or inexperienced. Okay, the next question I asked her was, um, I've heard that palm skis are prone to dental problems. Now, I read that on several websites and videos that I watched. Um, and so I asked, is that accurate? Can you share what other health concerns the breed has? Every breed has health concerns. We have health concerns. Every new breed, every old breed. And so this was what she said. In a recent survey conducted by the American Palm Ski, American Palm Ski Kennel Club, dental issues were reported once as excessive pluck. Um, luxating patellas was found to be the most common. The Alaskan clique height, same thing. So the most commonly seen issue we have health-wise is going to be patella luxation. And that is because it's a small brain. Just like large dogs will have um, hip dysplasia, smaller dogs seem to have patella luxation. I asked if there was um, any anywhere they should stay away from. <laughs> and I know this could be kind of touchy topic because obviously there's probably black sheep in every breed. Um, she said, yes, of course, unfortunately, palm skis are popular with puppy mills and with terrible breeders. Potential buyers should do their due diligence and only look for breeders that have been recommended by the American Palm Ski Kennel Club. Um, so I echo that. I think that it's super important that um, we don't support puppy mills and we don't support pet stores and we don't support scammers and that we do our part uh, before um, purchasing any dog. Okay. Um, but that was my comparison for the Alaskan Clean Eye and the Palm Ski. Um, I thank you guys again from American Palm Ski Kennel Club. I thank you guys for joining us on here because um, it really just helped us if we needed other questions answered. And of course, we like the support. So thank you guys. Hi, babies. If you enjoyed this video, please do me a favor and consider subscribing to our channel so that you don't miss out on any future videos that we post. And if you want to watch more videos like this video, you can check out the video over here. Until next time, bye!